welcome back, welcome back to Open Your Eyes. It is a cool Friday morning. We've got cool people. We had a wonderful segment a while ago uh, with Andaz, William, and of course Miriam. And now we're about to jump on into a conversation with our folks there at BEL. They're about to talk to us uh, on the topic of hurricane preparedness and restorations. Now in to tell us all about it, we have uh, Sheena Garnett. She is actually a senior P, uh, Corcom uh, officer at the, at the Belize Electricity Limited. We have Zane Fitzpatrick. He is safety, a safety specialist. Herschel Armstrong, who is a general manager of Dif distribution and services. Distribution services, actually. And Sherman Ferguson, supervisor at service uh, delivery. Guys, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So good I'll tell morning. you what. For us, it is a fun Friday, so there's a possibility somebody might have to sing our song. What want to say? <laughs> we'll go with you first, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So let's jump on into it. Um, Sheena, I'm sure that you've got an introduction for us. Tell us what's going on. I do. So today, we're going to be talking about our hurricane preparedness. We're going to be also discussing our hurricane um, restoration process. Our services, especially during and after a storm and we'll also be touching safety yeah the safety of our staff and our customers is very important to us and so my colleague mr zane fitzpatrick will be providing some insight into our hurricane preparedness plan mm -hmm. as well as sharing some useful information um, on our safety tips for before during and after a hurricane so mm -hmm. zane Hi. Good morning. Good morning, Senator Lizarraga. Good morning. John, good morning, Belize. Um, we are a very safety conscious company, you know, and we are very aware of the potential effects that come with a storm. Therefore, it is our utmost priority to protect life and property from any negative effects that come with the storm. Mm -hmm. so with that in mind, you know, we have a detailed hurricane plan that we we that is geared towards maintaining safe and reliable electricity during said storm. Mm -hmm. This plan is reviewed and it's updated annually and it's communicated to our staff. Mm -hmm. right? The plan operation before a storm, the actions taken when the storm is imminent and after the storm. Mm -hmm. right? There are several safety tips that we at BO would like to share with the general public. All right? one, of the, one of the things that we encourage is the cutting of danger trees. Mm -hmm. Now, when we say danger trees, we mean trees that are threatening our lives because most of the times that power outage happened during a storm, it is because the vegetation came in contact with the, the, the lines. All right, so we encourage this all year round. It's not just before the storm, but all year round to get in contact with the yield and inform them when they see such vegetation coming close to our line. Mm -hmm. All right, we also encourage people to learn how to turn off their electricity at home. All right, so before the storm, you want to learn where your switch box is, where your breaker box is, and learn how to turn off your electricity, mm. especially if a flood is expected. Yeah, I right. tell you what, Zane. I, I think that is a very, I think that is a very uh, important point that you brought up there. For the most part, everybody is at home, and one of the things that we always do is that we keep everything plugged in. If we're not yes. using a charger, we've got that plugged in. Um, then we leave it dangling right there. At the, we've got kids in the home. And these things are actually just right there, easily to be seen, and, and dealt with, with the wrong way. Now, Zane, uh, give us some advice on that in terms of uh, trying to get things plugged out, especially when you're finished with it. Right. I mean, besides from minimizing or reducing your bill, when you have something plugged in, you know, it draws electricity, whether you're using it or not. So we also encourage you to plug out, you know. Uh, it's, it's environmentally friendly and it reduces your bill, so plug out whatever you're not using. If you're not in the living room, turn off your fan, turn off the TV, the radio, if you're not using it, all right? What I, what I, what I, what I picked up just now, and I think bears repeating, mm -hmm. is um, the fact that we have a responsibility, or we should want to report to be um, trees that are close to power lines, mm -hmm. because yeah. that is where most of the damage occurs in a storm according to the young man. Yeah. So it is in our best interest if we have a tree that's too close to a power line mm -hmm. in our view to call BL and report it so that if we, if we do have a storm, our power is not knocked out because yeah. of that tree. So <laughs> that is correct. So that is correct. So that is yeah. 
All right. Um, further to what I was saying as it relates to turning off the electricity, please don't turn off the, the, the breaker box if you must stand in water. All right. It is important that you do not turn off the breaker box if there is a water, if you're exposed to water. All right. Now, um, I also want to share a safety tip as it relates to falling power line. Mm -hmm. All right. We must assume that any line or any uh, of BELs, lines that are not done during a storm are live. We must behave like it is live. So you have to keep your distance and contact B BL in order to report this. All right. Do not step in any water that these lines are in also. All right. So these are just the general safety tips that we encourage. Remember to cut down your danger tree. This is before the storm. Learn how to turn off your electricity. Mm -hmm. All right. And when the time comes for you to turn it off, you do so. And after the storm, if you see any falling power line, Please stay as far away from it as possible and contact BEL to report it. All right, that's 0800 BEL Care, Sheena. It sure is. Uh -huh. We also, Norman will be talking some more about how to reach us. Right, and after the once the altar is given, we then move into our restoration efforts. Uh -huh. All right, uh, I think Mr. Mr. Armstrong will be taking the lead on this, no? All right, Mr. Armstrong. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Belize. Good morning, John and Senator Lizarraga. Good morning. Of course, our priority uh, after a storm has passed is to restore power to all affected customers as quickly as possible and in a safe and systematic way. Mm -hmm. I think um, that's that's one of the key things with BEL. BEL really values safety, and so we have to make sure that at the end of a storm, the first thing we do is to fully assess the damage that has been caused. As Zain said just now, there may be down lines, there may be trees and fallen power lines, and trees are conductors as well. So even if the line itself is not down, the tree itself can be a hazard. So that's the first thing for us to do, to assess the damage that has been done. I could break that down for people. I could break that down for people. So, in other words, if a tree is on a power line, you could get shocked by the tree as well, not not only the power line. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Yes, you can. And in fact, yeah. the tree might be wet because of the storm, and so that increases its conductivity. Yeah. So, so it's even more of a hazard. So that that is that is right. So you stay away from fallen trees that have any contact with wires in uh, in a storm or after a storm right please call us and let us deal with it let us handle it let, let, let the experts deal with those things all right exactly all right so, so you were, you were so, making a presentation yeah sure go ahead so i i want to give you a quick uh electricity system list because it's good to understand what the system is comprised of so that you can understand our restoration process mm -hmm. so the first thing is we have these major power plants or power producers that provide power to the system. And those are people like your, your hydroelectric dams, your, your Belkogens, your, the CFE um, power plant that we get power from Mexico. Obviously that's not in Belize, but um, we have to make sure as a first step that those are intact and that they are able to provide power to us. Mm -hmm. And then the next part of the system is your transmission system, which brings power from those places to the communities across the country. So that transmission system, the next step for us is to make sure that that is fully up as well. Um, those that, that includes the 115 KV line, you know, those double double pole structures that you see going up north and highway, going yeah. across, along the Western Highway. That's, that's part of our, our major transmission network. Um, and so then the third step, is to ensure that the substations which are connected to those trans transmission lines are fully intact mm -hmm. and that we don't have any damages there. Um, those are now the points where you have your distribution feeders coming up, mm -hmm. right? Um, taking Hurricane Nana as, a, as an example, we were, we were fortunate because there was no damage to those aspects of the system. So all our generation and transmission system was up or, or substations were all intact. So we could have gone now straight to the next part of our system, which is our distribution lines. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And these are the lines that you typically see running in your neighborhoods, in, in the cities, and, and it consists of the high voltage lines, mm -hmm. which are the taller poles with the three lines running across, and, and then your low voltage net networks, um, which are, are more the, the braided type. Uh, if you've ever seen those conductors with three conductors in a, in a braided looking fashion, mm -hmm. uh, that's your low voltage network. So, so once we have gotten up our substations, the next step then is to make sure that we bring power back in a systematic way to those areas that have, um, have had damage. So, so based on our assessment that would have been done, we carry out repairs with priorities, starting from areas like your hospitals, like your uh, police and fire stations, your water systems. Mm -hmm. We try to make sure that we focus on those priorities first, right? Mm -hmm. And then systematically, we bring or we repair damages to those areas that feed the largest numbers of customers. So the main trunk of your distribution network. And then we branch out to the further areas, um, trying to capture the, the other customers as we go along. Yeah. As I said, the priority is to try to get this as quickly as possible. So we mobilize <laughs> as soon as the hurricane all clear has been given. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what you just, what, what you just did <laughs> for me, uh, um, uh, Herschel, is that you, you, made me, you made me see the, 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 the wide round of it. Simply means we, we know we've got our importance. And you mentioned hospitals, you mentioned the, the, the water, you mentioned um, you know, the police stations. Now, these are what we refer to as we're essential people or we're essential workers. When there's a, sure. when there's a hurricane and uh, power is out, everybody get, you, you get antsy. Or you, you really want, because you want your power. Yeah. But you there do. are priorities in, in, in before, the, before we get to you. And it's the, way, it's the way the world works. I mean, there are priorities. So it's a bind by the public. And I think, Mark, this is what we were talking about last, um, this past Wednesday in terms of a buy-in to the public. Everybody now is to understand that when there is a power outage, there are a few people or a few places that needs to be powered up so your livelihood can be safe. So this is what we're saying, right, Herschel? That's right. Thanks. You, you explained it very well. That's, that's exactly what it is. I try so one, every, I try one something. Everyone is important, you know. Don't, don't get me wrong. Yes. Or, like I said, is to restore power to all affected customers. Mm -hmm. I, so I, we expect that you would report all the damages in your area if you are out of power. Mm -hmm. We want customers to call us so that we are aware of all those affected areas. Mm -hmm. um, but as you said, we move in a very systematic way, but we will get to everyone. Right? Mark? Well, yeah, I, ha I, I have a couple of questions. One, one of them you just addressed in, in your prayer statement is that how can the public play a role in all of this and you've answered it you said look call in and report it to me oh mm -hmm. that's obvious the second question yeah. i have is in, in in other countries you know when a major storm affects an area they bring in resources in the u.s for example you see they bring in people and help from all other states mm -hmm. they go to that area to help restore power and, and services do we have that capacity or that capability in belize to bring in resources I, I'm sure from the other districts first, but, but if we don't have enough resources in country mm -hmm. to repair after a major hurricane, where would we go? What would we do? What is the plan? Good, very good question, Senator Lizarraga. We actually enjoy the benefit of being part of a broad organization in the region called CARILEC, and that's the Caribbean uh, Corporation of Electric Utilities. Mm -hmm. So. Carilec is, is one of our, our major assisters in, in the event of a hurricane. In fact, if you'd recall in past hurricanes that have hit other islands, yes. the lead has always been there to assist. We've sent crews from our teams to assist with restorations that happened in past years. Last year, um, we had two teams that went to assist in the hurricanes that had hit those islands in the Caribbean. Yes. And the same, the same is available for us. So Carolec keeps in touch with us. Um, in fact, with Hurricane Nana, we were in contact with them. And as I said, fortunately, the extent of the damage that, that had occurred was not extensive. So to, to that extent that we would have Definitely. needed additional assistance, but it is there available for us. Excellent. Herschel, uh, excellent point there and, and great question there, uh, Mark, uh, simply because we 
have seen uh, as well on social media and also on uh, our local television uh, networks uh, about Belizeans from BEL actually moving out to, I think it was to Aruba, or I, I'm not sure, but there are different countries that we actually visit in terms of helping people or helping that country restore their, uh, restore their power. So for that, I've got to say kudos to BEL because they are actually doing what they need to do to help with our uh, wider community. It's an, it's an important exposure because it gives our personnel first-hand experience mm -hmm. in these types of scenarios and that they can deploy and, and, and use that experience when they come back in the event we ever need it. So, Excellent. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We, yes. We've heard the kudos. Anything else from you, Herschel? Well, I know, I know it's a fun Friday, like you said, John, and this is a, a relatively heavy topic, but, but I'd just like to wish everyone a, a safe and happy set. Timber. <laughs> so I didn't get to put that part in. <laughs> All right, we, we do have Sherman, and Sheena is doing. Uh, will be doing her introduction with that. And we're happy that the power has been restored to all places down south, right, Herschel? Yes, yes. Excellent. We, uh, we, we shot for it all years. All right, so we do have I, I, we do have Sherman, and Sherman is actually the supervisor of the uh, service delivery. Uh, so Sherman, whenever you're ready, you could jump in and tell us. Uh, on your corner as to how things are going there. Yes, thank you, John and Senator Lizarraga, for having us this morning. And good morning to all our viewers who joined us. First, I'd like to echo the words of um, Zip in that one of our major priority is the safety of our customers and that of our employees. And as discussed, planning and preparing can make a big difference in safety and also keeping the lights on during and after a storm or a hurricane and BL is here to help us. Mm -hmm. And for the next few minutes, I'll be highlighting how we do so and how we are available to our customers. Zidane Herschel brought out the threat that trees have on, on our lines during a hurricane. Mm -hmm. so again, if customers, they would see trees that are near our lines, let us know. All that needs to um, be, be provided to us is the, the um, location and we will arrange for the tree to be cut. Of course, this is in addition to BL vegetation management program, whereby we do surveys and we do line clearing on our end to, to get these addressed. Mm -hmm. um, those who have submitted tree cut requests, we thank you very, very much for, for doing so. And if it has not been completed as yet, we please rest assured that they are being addressed and scheduled shortly. If a customer um, sees that their service entrance needs reinforcement, maybe the, um, the pole is, is not attached to the wall, or maybe they observe that there, that there is potential hazard with their internal wiring, please arrange for an electrician of your choice who can assist you with this um, to be completed. Of course, if it requires a, um, a temporary disconnection, please contact us so that we could uh, schedule this so that your, your electrician could carry out their um their works for a listing of licensed electricians in your area please reach out to the public utilities commission or you could contact us so that we could direct you to that listing of licensed electricians in your specific area um bl has several ways that our customers can contact us we have the toll free number which is 0800-235-2273 mm -hmm. customers can also contact us via whatsapp and that number is 60097. For customers who may have experienced um, some sort of delay, WhatsApp responses, or were having difficulties in getting through to the toll free number, we do apologize for that. And we are currently working to improve all of our services during this time. Mm -hmm. um, BL is also available on Facebook. So like us on Facebook today, and you can use the messaging service on Facebook to contact a rep who is available to answer your questions or your queries. Um, BL also has um, a live chat option, which is available via our, our website, which is bl.com.bz. Mm -hmm. And a live chat option there whereby somebody is available to, to answer your, 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 um, your question. Yeah. Um, we would also like to reach out to those who may know someone who is on life support, probably a family member or a friend. Um, Please contact us so that we have this information on file. And um, all that needs to be provided to us is the medical documentation confirming the status of, of your loved one or your family member. And this information will be used in prioritizing the restoration efforts mm -hmm. after a storm 
and any other outage that that um, we may have in the future that that the com that the country is experiencing. Excellent. Um, we would like to remind our customers that they may also reach us during a storm or a, or a hurricane. We are available at all times. Someone is there to assist you. However, during a storm, of course, um, due to safety concerns, we would not be able to address the situation there and then. Yeah. Um, but as long as soon as the uh, care is given, BL will be responding to all of your of your of your comments or, or your concerns. Um, after a storm, as, as Herschel advised, we have teams that report to the areas affected to address our damage and to assess these, these damages. However, customers also can report to us any damage lines, um, any trees that are down, any safety hazard. Probably they are seeing some sort of sparking lines happening, some transformer that is on fire. Please let us know mm -hmm. so that we can address these when our crews are dispatched to the areas that are affected. Also, if a customer um, have any damage to their service entrances or internal wiring after a storm, mm -hmm. please arrange with your electrician to have these addressed and then contact us once this is completed. Sherman, what is, what, is a, what is a service entrance? A service entrance is, is where the meter is, in, is installed and we have that, that pipe leading on top of the meter. That, is, that, that entire fixture is considered the service entrance. Ah. All right. And of course, during a storm or because of the wind, we have many of these that may have been damaged yeah. during the storm. So um, like, like, like I said, customers need to contact their electrician so that this could be fixed and then call us once it's completed so that we could address them. All right, excellent. Now, you, you've said a mouthful. I really and truly enjoy the presentation and it brings clarity, clarity to how we're being uh, dealt with or how we are being serviced by BEL. I think one of my uh, major concerns, though, is uh, in, in areas whereby we see a lot of wires and people are trying to steal electricity. Let's talk about the dangers of this, and people need to understand how dangerous this situation is. Electricity is not, a, is not a, any wool knife. Now, this deals with you properly. It deals with you. <laughs> you don't want to mess with it. So let's talk about the importance of, uh, of uh, the proper way to handle um, electricity and uh, why is it dangerous to just try to run your own wires. That, that's a good point, Janan, and maybe it's a good opportunity for us to, to talk about some of those things. Uh, we do have uh, areas of our system where people take the risk of trying to steal electricity by perhaps foregoing their service entrance or trying to tap into our own lines. Um, that's, that's extremely risky, where, as you said, John, it's, you're t dealing with one of the largest hazards that we have uh, in, in our community, actually. Yes. And so BL is very big on safety. We keep, we've kept saying it all morning. The right way to get power supply is, is through your meter. It's properly through a connection that BL will be able to inspect and ensure that it is safe before we connect. The, the risks associated with connecting directly to a line is not just the the connection or when you're trying to connect to the line but also the the adequacy of that line or infrastructure that you actually put in place so so the if you connect a, a conductor that is too small for the current that you put in there mm -hmm. then then you have a spire hazard there in the future as well so it's not just don't feel like you're out the out clear or, or the coast is clear after you've tried to connect that thing you know it's it's a huge hazard that we've seen um, unfortunately, people who have been um, injured and, and to the point of death in the past, mm -hmm. and it's something very serious, and, and we discourage all people or all customers from, from trying to do that, mm -hmm. and we encourage you instead to, to contact us and have us um, connect you in a safe, uh, systematic way. Right? Over the past I, few months... Just to, sure, sure, go hmm. ahead. Just, just to add to, to her shell. We don't want to have um, customers um, believe that this is the only option they have to getting power. BL does provide assistance if it's an issue whereby they really cannot afford to connect the, the service on their own. We have a Connecting Homes Improving Lives service, mm -hmm. um, a program, sorry, whereby customers can contact us and we'll be able to assist or in, um, in financing their, their, their connection. 
We've heard um, over the past few years, for the most part, a lot of people, uh, Mark, have been home. Uh, but yet, you know, we, people have been complaining about high electricity costs and high electricity rates at this particular point. Um, uh, let's try to address that situation because I think it's all about understanding what you're doing with your power and how you're taking care of business at your home. Uh, but let's try to address that situation of people complaining about high electricity rates over the past few months. We, we um, have been receiving um, complaints or, or concerns about high consumption. And uh, we have been addressing them for, for the customers who um, may make a report and want us to, to assist them. Mm -hmm. um, based on, on historical data, we, we do see that there is an increase in consumption um, in the warmer parts of, of the year, mm -hmm. starting from February just to September. And this is a pattern that we have been ob observing. Based on the inspections that are carried out, we do see that it, the, 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 in, the increase in consumption is either a result of direct usage or um, or affected by the by the weather condition. And we are open to having further discussions regarding high bill concerns. It's a topic which we would like to to, um, to, to discuss further. So if, if you would um, invite us back again once more, we indeed would be open to having a further discussion on this. How can one uh, track or yeah, track the amount of consumption they're doing? Can, is that possible? Are there devices that people can get to track how much uh, electricity they're, they're consuming uh, for the month? Yes, that's, that's very possible, John. Um, well, the, first of all, the meter that is outside the house that we use to bill customers is, is a device that you can read as, as well. And you can, in fact, check that meter on a regular basis to, to track your actual consumption in, in what is called kilowatt hours. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the measure that we use to bill you. So what happens when we bill is we read that meter on a monthly basis. And we can, on your, on your bill, you can see the day that the meter reader that we ha actually made a read on your, your bill. And so you can check the meter to see what consumption or what was the reading on, on, on the, at the time that you read, and you can check it again the following day. And that would be a four hour period that you can now see what is the difference between those readings to, to get an idea of what was your consumption over that time. Yeah. So, so that meter itself you can use, but there are also other smaller devices available that you can plug into your uh, socket before or between your, your device and, and your wall outlet. Mm -hmm. That can also give you an idea of what your consumption is. We use some of those types of devices to, to carry out um, audits and um, try to help customers in, in understanding their consumption. Right. So, so there are different ways, John. Oh, definitely. You know, we're so thankful to know that part at least. And I want to jump uh, quickly to Sheena because I know time is not on our side. That's the, that's the worst thing. Time, not got time for we stand, we part time. That's right. You know, <laughs> but Sheena, um, in terms of getting additional information, where can we get information? Can we go on a Facebook page? Can we go on a, on a website and try to understand the works of BEL? Yes. Uh, on our Facebook page, we normally, we have regular updates on energy saving tips. We have updates on hurricane safety tips. So our Facebook page has regular updates um, as it relates to some, you know, getting in contact with us. Um, and and the, the one thing that I can say is that even though our offices are closed, our services continue, our services are available. And so if you want to find out anything, just contact us, reach us on our WhatsApp at 600 -6097. Give us a call at 0800-BEL-CARE. Live chat us on our webpage. Send us a message on our Facebook page. We are here to help. We are here to uh, address any questions that our customers may have. And so we just want to let them know that to contact us with whatever queries, whatever concern, or if they just need some information. All right, there we go. So we totally understand the situation, and I'll tell you what, it's not good to listen to hear, see. Which brings me back to Herschel. I know, guys, I've got to say thank you so very much for joining us, but I did mention it is a fun Friday, so put Herschel on the screen for me. Uh, put Herschel on the screen for me. He's a musical guy. He's a music genius, so I'm sure he should get this one. And Herschel, if you get this one in one take, 
I might just crown you Mr. Friday. We already had one, so we need to get another one. Herschel, who will sing the song? Yeah, is so this, yeah, is so that, yeah, is so who, yeah, is so what, yeah, is so why. You who sing the song, Herschel? Ooh, uh, yeah, yeah, you put me on the spot, John. <laughs> Sherman, you, you know who sing that song? I have no clue. <laughs> uh, 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 Zin, you know who sing that song? No idea, John. No, Gina? No. I think it might have been uh, Miss... Severly. <laughs> come on, man, come on, I, I, man. Come on, Herschel, give me, come. Yes, give me, give me. Here is so this, here is so what, here is so who, here is so why. You, you know that song? I know. Oh my goodness, it's a fun Friday. But come on, Herschel. I, I don't want to guess and be wrong, but I mean, it's, it's a woman with a voice like Leela Vernon. It's there it's you funny. go. That's my boy. That's my buddy. Herschel, I want to crown you Mr. Friday too. <laughs> <laughs> It is Leela Vernon indeed, Yeri yeah. So. That's the name of the song. Okay. Yeah, but guys, thank you so very much. We had an excellent time with you. And of course, clarity from BEL, definitely uh, something that uh, we should always be getting. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank, thank you. you for having yeah. us. Thank you. <laughs> Fun Friday, Mark. I keep well, on I never, I, I've never heard that one. You never I've heard never that heard song? I've never heard Leela sing that one. What a no. cross, 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 cross. What a cross. Why? You hear how Mary, they have man. I want to tell you about it after the, <laughs> during the commercial break. When we come back, we'll be joined by a musical guest, and that's none other than Melanie Gillett. She's got a new song out. It's called Search For Me. Search, search for what? She'll tell you when we come back. <laughs>